Uh, I think we're live and Adam on Instagram for the first time. Welcome to the Front Runner Sport Podcast. Uh, we have a new member of the team this week. I just I don't know if you've been here before, John no, T, but we've never worked before. hundred no, percent. Okay, cool. Yeah. John T. Mark joins us. Of the team. <laughs> yeah, but uh, ancient he, of age, exactly, but new and experience. The there yeah, we go. Yeah. And uh, we have our staple diets of Velile and uh, <laughs> Mazola joining us. Thank you to you too for joining us. As uh, yeah, we reflect. There's so much that's been happening, but I think the first uh, point was what we were looking towards as far as uh, Amajita last week. We knew that the draw was coming for them as far as who they're going to face as far as the World Cup was concerned in their group. We now know that obviously it's going to be Argentina, Korea and uh, Portugal. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it's a tough group. I mean, you just look at that and you just think to yourself, do I know of any young Argentinians that are playing first team football? Do I know of any young Portuguese playing first team football? And you can already start ticking those boxes, which then brings into contrast our youngsters and whether they are given the same opportunities that their opponents have been given. It's going to make for an interesting time in May. Really, how do you see this one? No, very interesting group. Um, tough that we got there. Uh, but also, I mean, uh, having been um, seated, uh, in fact, uh, we're not seated, but uh, uh, having been in the last pot um, for the draw, you're always going to expect a tough draw like this because um, by the time you come up against the big guns, all those other groups have been said. And also, sure. it's also because of our record, because and uh, we hadn't been to the club world cup since 2009 when we went to 2017 right so we've been away for a very long time to and also our performance as well mm. uh, i don't think we've even gone out of uh, the group stages yeah to, we're knocked to, out in yeah, the first to, round in 2017 yes, so yes so it was always going to be difficult uh, to get um to be in a better a pot uh so but w- what i I can also look at. Uh, I remember the in 2017 we were playing at the same venue uh, for the last game when we played against Uruguay, and I always uh, talk about this thing. And this boy, he played two games. He plays for uh, Juventus now, and I saw him. He started last week against Atletico Madrid. Uh, Bentancu. Bentancur, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, for Uruguay. Right. He played against uh, our boys. That boy, uh, Grant Mahaman. Uh, mm. Korea South Korea. Yes, mm. and we controlled him very well. In right. fact, uh, it was a goalless draw between us. And you know what? Uh, following year, the boy was playing in the World Cup regularly. Yes. You know, so it goes back to the point um, that you are making. So in the same same day, um, Portugal <laughs> was also playing. So they are coming back now. Mm. And interestingly, Portugal were also in the same group with Zambia, and they had lost to the Zambian team. Uh, of Fashion Sakala, right. Pets in Dhaka, um, uh, Mwepu, you know. So when you look at the progression, Zambia is not there. Mm. Portugal is back. Mm. Yes, maybe you can say something about our performance uh, because uh, Zambia went all the way. Uh, I think they were uh, eliminated in the in the, in the quarterfinals. Mm. But they're not there now. So it goes back. And some of the boys that were taking back uh, like Kulekani Kupeka, the goalkeeper, who's the captain now, mm. uh, he might not have been the number one goalkeeper at the time, but he's back. So, mm. in terms of progression, you know, so <laughs> uh, when you speak about, about countries that, that are not really under 20, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. That's a whole nother story. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because, w- especially the way that you've got this thing so close, John T. You've got a World Cup in 2017 mm. and there's another World Cup um, in 2019. So even the com- uh, the composition of your squad, mm. there are players who will still qualify mm. for under 20 this time. Mm-hmm. So they will help you for the next qualification. Sure. So it shows you that uh, some countries were short-sighted or it's the disease that continues to eat our continent. Yeah, I, I believe know. it's much easier to... Um, to assess under 17s than it is under 20s. It's yes, yeah. With the DNA and the Yeah, genetics. you can't do that in the bone test. And yeah, you mm. can't do that the older they get. Mm. But um, I mean, you speak about progression. Does that progression, in a sense, mean that uh, we're going to be able to progress past that group stage? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's another interesting debate. Um, 
I think, who was it? I think it was in, in the Sunday Times yesterday. I read uh, Sazi Hadebe sort of asking the same question um, that do we have this disease of, especially with the junior national teams, because we become so consistent now almost with qualifying for major mm-hmm. competitions, uh, unlike the senior team. <laughs> That's another story for another day. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but the question now is, are we there just to make up the numbers? Are we going to do what, what Zambia did when they were there in South Korea, um, getting beyond the group stages and getting to the quarterfinals and really looking like uh, a threat mm. or maybe perhaps even one of the underdogs' favorites or what what have you. So that's 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 another thing. <clears throat> uh, you know, proud of the boys for progress shown. Proud of the boys for <laughs> being <laughs> being consistent. But my concern here again is that in in twenty seventeen. There were several players um, that were already playing PSL football. Right. Um, whereas this time around, I think we mentioned it last week, uh, we had the Amazulu um, uh, left Mabilis. back, yeah. uh, Mabili, so as the only one who was who, who's playing regularly sure. PSL football. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> you've got Ngobo, who's registered to play for Kaiser Chiefs in, in the first team, but obviously he's only been playing reserve team football. Sure. Um, so... <clears throat> That's that's a difference this time around. Tabo Snong, yes, he's done it again. He's managed to qualify for a World Cup a place, um, but the dynamics are very different this time around. You know, um, you are really looking at possibly wanting the boys for a longer period uh, mm. to assess fitness levels, to to get them to obviously again understand the way you want to play. Um, but they're not really used used to playing. They might play be playing regularly reserve team football, right. but that level of competition that's just a yeah. different stage altogether. So you know, but, and of course you'll have. I mean, I did a story the other day looking at just how many actually uh, PSL players uh, that can play at the World Cup that are uh, uh, eligible given the, the the FIFA rules that you must only be turning. Uh, 20 uh, mm. by by the end of the calendar year I think right. there, there there were several um, but again some of them are playing I'm not playing regularly but you know the teams are going to come out of the woodwork now wanting because it's a big stage now yes you know mm. <coughs> their players must be there be that, scouted and whatever. it's interesting what you're talking about <coughs> uh, because I saw a tweet from uh, Lunga Sokela uh, from Amazulu. Yes, um, <coughs> correct. Where he, w- he was talking about this, that, um, and you know, Mabiliso is not just any left back for them. Yeah. This is their first He's choice left back. 90 minutes all you the know? time. Yeah. And the boy is young. And Did he play on Saturday against? Uh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll check that. Yeah. Because Mabiliso, they released him. And I think they had two players um, in, in, in that tournament. And he reminded me of uh, the situation where Ajax refused to send their and, players yeah. for the under-17 AFCON. Right. Uh, I think they were going overseas to play a tournament. And when the team qualified uh, to its maiden <laughs> under-17 World Cup, now all of a sudden Ajax were, uh, were availing the players because they know. Because... At the shop World Cup, window, yeah. it's the shop window. Sure. So are we? I mean, are we going to see the Lara Fosters of this world at the World Cup? Then? No, no, no. I spoke to uh, Tabo Snong last mm-hmm. week, mm-hmm. and um, he did say when it comes to Foster, when it comes to Tashrik mm-hmm. Matthews, yeah, uh, uh, but he was there at the Afcon anyway. Yes, English. and also uh, Cross. Mm. Uh, there's this boy used to play for Aces. Is now playing for Schalke. In, in Germany, yeah, um, they understood because this tournament it fell outside the FIFA calendar, right? So they couldn't get them. Uh-huh. So now, uh, after the draw, uh, he's gonna go back to to Europe and visit all the clubs mm-hmm. where they are looking at selecting the players and share their program uh, with the coaches. But uh, remember, the uh, under twenty World Cup, mm. it's where everyone yeah. is looking forward to showpiece. Yeah. Yes, yes, and he did say that uh, players like. Foster and uh, doesn't see a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not going to be an issue because it, it, you know you were saying with Foster, it's not just about missing him uh, on the field of play, but also just in the camp mm. because he's been part of this group. Remember, mm. um, this group, their loss against Senegal, uh, it was their first loss in eighteen months. Mm. You know, mm. um, but I, I also want to agree with Mazola. The, the only blemish for me around this Karen Amajima Amachita team um, is not having. 
these players who are active in the PSL. Sure. Uh, because Mazola talks about that group of 2017, we had Tebu Kwena, Grand Mahaman, Pagamani Matlambi, uh, Ray Frosler. Um, you, you also had... Wise men, I think. Was it? Uh, wise men, when you, I was there, mm. but at the time we were still playing in the MTC. But you also had Luther Singh. You know, mm. we had started to do well with the team. Sure. So now all those players are not there. And the majority of the players in this camp are players who are playing in the MTC. Mm. Now the MTC as the league finished this past weekend. Sure. So now what? You know, mm. and now they are only left with what? Um, the MTC shield. And so is, MTC that not, shield? is that not in a way more important than result, a result-orientated view on the Under-20 World Cup? Because, I mean, if you think about it, mm. we're playing Argentina, who are one of the best teams in South America perennially. Mm. We're playing Portugal, who are the reigning European under-20 champions, I think, and mm. also you know, consistently do well on a global stage. Mm. We're playing South Korea, who are a rising force in Asia and have been around forever. Mm. I mean, if I was to now be asked to place a bet on where South Africa were going to finish, without my heart, I would place a bet on South Africa finishing bottom, bottom of, the of the group. Right. So is it not more important that these players there's some sort of structure in place where these players then get into more PSL clubs. They play in top flight football or they move to Europe or they get that they develop so they can then play for the under 23s and then ultimately the senior team. Is that not almost more important than us winning the under 20 world cup or, no, no, no. or going far at the under 20 world cup? It's, it's, it would the be players, my question. The players, well, I guess you could have both. No? Yeah, you could have both, if, you could have but, both yeah. but I'm just saying that, as long as, as, the long as there's, there. the development is there, can we then say, okay, well, you know, we were playing Argentina, Portugal and South Korea. I think so it's okay. taking from this recent AFCON, you get to see the competitive levels uh, right. of the team. You can tell between those who are playing at that level and that level, um, taking nothing away from the MTC because I think one of the things, at least we've got, we've seen these teams um, no more playing um, just around here in Joburg or a team in Cape Town and playing against a team from the LFA there and they're beating them 12 nil, 15 nil, you know? Mm. So at least there's strength versus strength. Yeah. But in terms of competitiveness, um, you then have a situation where a team is trailing 2 nil, it's 15 minutes to go, this team, they know that they need to find an equalizer because they're either fighting for promotion or relegation. Yes. So that competitive... So with the stakes edge, not being that high, you're going to struggle to get that level of competitiveness. Yes, because now... Mm. If a player has never played for that, mm. uh, and mm. you're, you're taking him to the World Cup, yeah. say, hey, this is where it is, you know? What's he going to do when it's crunch time? Well, now? I mean, again, I think to John T's point as well, <clears throat> if if now the MDC, there's no action there, mm. and it's 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 the, the, the cup competition version of it, that's also an opportunity for Tabo to just say, hang on, they are not really doing much. Can I just get them for for longer then, and especially the locally based players, right. and get them to play together to understand the camp. each other better? You mm. know, have a camp mm. and then, okay, work out a different plan for the overseas based players because I think we 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 have um, a, a decent number over there. So, either way, I think the the only problem that he faces here is is those clubs that are now going to try and impose. Uh, players on 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 Tabo Sinong. but if he sticks to his guns and says I'm picking the core of the team that did the job in Nigeria yes. and I'm selecting those overseas based players because it's not that they refused they just their clubs so, yeah. could not based on the rules yes. that clubs could I suppose South African teams could argue the same but they you, you know their issue here is that they were perhaps not even as patriotic as probably they they they, they should have been so mm. even though I feel they would still have a case to say look. You know, we, we we still had a case why we couldn't bring in these players. But when I looked at that list of players that are in the PSL, registered to PSL club but couldn't go to Niger, actually, a lot of them are not playing first team football. So really, there was no <laughs> there was no excuse to, to, okay. to, 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 to let, let them, them go. go. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, yeah. Jens. In That's fact, a in good... fact uh, Tabo has already said that uh, the majority of his squad yeah. will come from the players he's been working with in the last 18 months. Makes sense though. Yes. To reward the same players yes, who've been there. Yes, yes, yes. does it in a sense, but then you've also got to be practical and say the other teams are also going to beef up their squads with yeah. players they probably didn't play at their, at right. their kind of continental right. tournament. So you've got to be yeah. competitive. Yeah. You've got yes. to 
you know, you can't just you. It's it's all very well being loyal, but if you get thrashed five nil by all the teams, it doesn't look great. Well, if know. I remember correctly, Tabo did uh, argue the same thing before <laughs> before South Korea that mm. he would pick mm. the core of, but once the clubs were availing the the the, the, the regulars or or the much more experienced players, experienced maybe, yeah. players he. You know, and I think even know, the I think even the association kind of had to step in. Yeah, no, even though we cannot confirm, but uh, <laughs> the final selection, yes, it's up to the coach. But uh, there's a lot of pressure uh, coming from the FA. Mm. But uh, the coach will just have to remain resolute because you also have now have the agents who see this is, is an opportunity mm. um, because we're going to the World Cup. Mm. But also some clubs as well, clubs who don't normally release players. All of a sudden, because they can see that there's gold coming, so we will be watching. I guess we'll know by the 23rd of May when it all gets uh, started. Thanks, gents, for your reflections as far as Amajita are concerned.